Hello and welcome to yet another edition of 21 Minutes with KKB. My name is Kwabna Chenche Hinebwati. Today we are doing some politics and we'll be speaking to none other than uh, the gentleman who well, happens to have courted some uh, public sympathy on one hand, but uh, for a lot of his very familiar friends in his party, well, some of them are not very uh, happy with some, some comments he's alleged to have made about the party. Well, that will not be our main focus, but of course, we'll touch base on that issue and several others right here on this program. Stay tuned. My name is Kwabna Chencha Hinebwati. Now, my guest for today is a lawyer and a leading member of the governing New Patriotic Party. He's actually the deputy, acting deputy general secretary of the party, Nana Obriboy. Nana, many thanks for having us. Thank you very and, uh, much. Uh, you're making a lot of waves so everywhere on the internet, <laughs> on social media, in the news. Uh, on, uh, on... That, that is life. <laughs> Once a while, there is a storm in the life of every human being. Mm. We all learn lessons from some of these mm. things. Some of these dis in, uh, discretions uh, were not well taken. Mm. But at the end of the day. So, so, so Nana, the, the, the main issue is that you, you, are, you are alleged to have been recorded saying certain things about your party and the fact that the, the Flagstaff House gave about five million CDs to the party and uh, of course if, if you hear the, the audio it's like a, a bitter man talking about how things have uh, things are being done to him. I honestly speaking I think mm. that uh, we don't need to reverse it, those issues. We mm. um, should keep them. Basically we've all learned a lesson we are forging ahead. Mm. We don't need to. I don't think there is the need for us to reverse it. In, in a recent interview with Ghana Web, you mentioned that uh, you had to solicit some more information to help your party. So that was a, a, a move. I'm, I'm saying that, you, Chen Chen, I think that we should try and, and forget about this unfortunate incident because uh, friends have spoken to me, but leadership will summon me. And, but, uh, we need to have shown enough, rendered enough apology to everybody, MPP, NDC, CPP, Ghanaian, sympathizers, supporters, friends. So I think that we should not be concentrated. But did you see it as a case of indiscretion on your part? Do you think you should have been more guarded? Uh, like I said, yes. Yes, however, like I said, we should, all, all of us have learned a lesson. Given the chance, would you repeat what you did? <laughs> In the interest of the party, anyway, because you're trying to get some information. I'm saying that uh, nobody repeat what has happened. If you know the mental agony I've gone through, uh, the heckling, the <laughs> so, no, no, no. I mean, nobody would like to go through such unfortunate incident, drama, hell <laughs> so it has been a very bitter experience and i said i think that we are forgiving each other the gentleman who did this do you know him like i said i don't want to and i don't need to mm. i think that ever since this incident happened a lot of people have spoken yes to I, him. I understand that point a but, lot but, of but, but a, lo a lot of people also have spoken to him okay so if the, if, the, if the chance comes for two of us to meet, I think I'll shake hands with him. Oh, really? Oh, yes. You will? Yes, I will. After causing you so much pain? Uh, that is uh, um, experience in life. So you think this is the work of God? God wanted to teach you and um, show you something? I don't think there should be any comment on that. Yeah. Because I think that he has learned a lesson. I've also learned a lesson. People have spoken to him. People have also spoken to me. Have you heard from him since? Oh, no, I don't want to. Initially, no, it was quite But People trying to bring us together. But some have even made attempts to bring us together. I don't want to know my view. I said, oh, look. It's one of those things. It's one of those things. So I'll shake hands with him. I'm forgiving him. I think he also has forgiven me. For yeah, him, but did you for wrong my, him in any way? You didn't wrong yeah. him, did you? Well, that is for my initial at best and the rest. Yes, so. 
it's some, life. I, it's I, life. I, I remember reading somewhere that uh, uh, someone suggested this is karma. And that uh, <laughs> the same things you did to people like Paula Winter, Mia Foko, and uh, Kwabne, Bro, Japan, are, not they, yourself in particular, but the party. They are not being very sincere and honest. Mm. Mr. Foko will tell you that I was one particular individual who campaigned for him. Oh, you campaigned for Foko? Paula, he himself. Okay. He himself, he will not deny it. I campaigned for him. And by the this Pokal Afoko incident brought some um, misunderstanding between my good self and my brother, Stephen Tim. Okay. Yeah, so I don't see how. So M M Mr. Tim felt betrayed because you went to support Paul Afoko? Uh, somehow, I think so. Somehow, those days. Do you think Mr. Afoko was treated fairly by the party? No comment on that. Why not? I don't want to. I don't want to. Mm. It will not serve any purpose at all. No comment. He was suspended for acts he said. I, he I am saying about. no comment. He would continue to be a brother. Mr. Crab will continue to be a brother. Mr. Japan will continue to be a brother. Everybody will continue to be a brother. Are yeah, all your friends? You still speak to them? Um, no, I don't think I've, I think it was Kwabana I shook hands with him in Kumasi, December 17th. Okay. Yes. And then I'm going to put you in a tight corner here. You know, um, the mandate of the current executives runs out in a few months' time. It means uh, a lot more people will be contesting. I know you're, you're not seeking election. No, 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 no. You don't want any party office, any position in the party? No, but my position is the Deputy General Secretary, so it is the National Executive Committee. That okay, next is going to put you there. Okay. So, um... Should Mr. Foko run again, would you support him? I don't want to comment on that one. Actually, in my candid opinion, let me be very, very honest and sincere. This is without bias, this is without prejudice. Uh, the one particular person, I would pray that he wins, and if the party assess as Deputy General Secretary John Bodu. Let me be very frank, honest and sincere. I support every candidate who is contesting. But your preference is John Boydou? Perfect. Even, in though, the party, even though he hasn't helped you get any contracts in the country <laughs> since the party came to power? If the party will consider me for the position of Deputy General Secretary, in all sincerity... You, you think he has managed the affairs of the party extremely well? To the best of my knowledge. People have had issues with, for instance, uh, the Invincible Forces, Delta Forces, <laughs> and how they have... Yeah, 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 that well. Rampage, it's how it's, it's only that people don't people. have the opportunity to get near him. Hmm. Is it because he probably hasn't allowed people to get near no, him? No, 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 he has been allowing people to get near him. Then, you see, don't put blame on John. Who should we blame? <laughs> please, please, should, please. Should we blame the president? I've the just spoken a lot. I've, I, I, will, I will continue to root for him. And now who should we blame for the vigilantism of your party? <laughs> uh, it's like somebody saying that um, the arm robbery, the spread of arm robbery is too much and you should blame A of you. I said, look, we don't need to. So if, 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 if there's increasing crime rate in the country, you don't think we should hold people like all the of us, no. or the interior minister or no. other people in charge? No, my brother, let's be very that. honest. All of us. Must accept that fact. Whose primary responsibility is it to see, Population is increasing. Population is increasing. Mm. Non availability of CCTV cameras. Look, it's my prayer that Parliament will pass a law that every public institution we must erect CCTV cameras. Who needs to spearhead that agenda? Is it but, me sitting here or is that it... That agenda, I think I'll take it upon myself. The, the I will take it upon myself. Because I've said, look, from this MPP office, if you have CCTV, then you next... have CCTV? No, I will not tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the next 20 meters, there is a bank over there. Assuming they have installed CCTV. That was PPP office. If there so is at least we can track the sequence of events, how exactly, things happen. Exactly. I've, been can... mm. I've been saying this. I've been saying that. Look, let's do that. We cannot. We cannot hide behind the fact Hotels, that there's no legislation suggesting Laura that Park. we need to install CCTV no, but cameras. The, the installation so of CCTV of that, will help all of us. Of course, it will help. But whose primary responsibility is it to protect the citizenry? That's the question. It is all of us. 
we need to protect ourselves. Yeah, all of us. Then why do we elect leaders? All of us must be very then we may, we may as well just govern no, ourselves. No, you see, look, imagine you are staying in the house. There are some characters in the house. With due respect, they used to go out around 7, 8 p.m. Always they come back around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 8 p.m., 4 a.m. Oh, you can inform the police. But I'm very suspicious of these characters. Very much suspicious of these characters. You understand? Let me give you a scenario. A scenario where uh, a community without a police station, a community of, say, over 300 uh, people without a, a police station, or with a police station with no police officers in there, and they have such a concern. They wish they could speak to the police about it. Who who are they to go to? My brother, <laughs> How are they supposed my, my to report brother, I'm telling such a thing? My brother, I'm telling you. And and they, they and day in day out, the crime brother, situation is increasing. I'm telling you. What, what do they do? It is not easy for armed robbers to operate in a very small community. It will be extremely impossible for armed robbers to operate in my village, Abranya. Because look, in Abranya, everybody knows everybody. Exactly. So that means you, you disagree with those who think the IGP, for instance, has to go? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Why? You shouldn't go? Not at all. Do you feel safe? Even, even if I don't feel safe, I think that is the concerted effort of all of us. Do you feel safe? Oh, even if I don't feel safe, look, the IGP should go. And the IGP is gone. Two or three days, a new IGP Some is... Some say we need a more competent person who has practical no, I bet, experience, honestly, on honestly, experience I bet to fix the security situation. Honestly, you don't I think it's a problem? Differ. No, we don't need to play politics with this. We don't need to be attacking people. Do you have any intention of disbanding your vigilante groups? Oh, I don't see how you are interested in this, my vigilante issue. Well, you, do, don't, you don't think it's an issue? How do you define the vigilante? There are no vigilante groups? <laughs> how do you call them? <laughs> I don't think people see people are just trying to give a dog a bad name to hang it. Doctor Force, so Doctor exactly Force Limited is a limited liability company. Some say you've institutionalized this to a point where, when they even perpetrate crimes, you don't oh, see it see, as a problem. See, there have been see, uh, there have been a number of incidents where members of these groups have assaulted people, including journalists, people who have just come to cover a story, people who have come to do this. They have lawlessness, lawlessness is lawlessness. Whatever is carried out, whatever is perpetrated, is lawlessness. Will you be willing to prosecute a member of the vigilante groups in your party should they commit such a crime? If he's caught in the web, if he breaks the law, why not? About three of them assaulted but, but, one of my journalists <laughs> and two others, one from TV3 and one from CTFM, till date. But we don't know what has happened well, to Let case. you render an apology. An apology is enough after assaulting <laughs> someone physically, beating him up, but, kicking but, him on the ground. How do you say that uh, they, they are or they were members of the Invincible Force? Because they identify themselves as such. They told you? Yes. Oh. But, you see, I'm saying that lawlessness is lawlessness. Whatever is carried out, whatever is perpetuated. So you don't need to give a dog a bad name and hang it. One of the biggest issues your uh, people have raised has to do with corruption in your party. Corruption. Even no. at the height of some, there have been reports about corruption at the presidency, for instance. No, you see, you see, I, 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 I disagree with all those who are talking about You don't think some people in the, par in, in the party are the flag staffers are corrupt? No, no, no. You don't no, think anybody no, in the no, flag staffers no, no. is corrupt? You see, uh, recently, our colleagues, I heard people talking about transparency perception. Corruption perception index, the transparency. Very transparency. good, my brother. Mm. Perception. No pretty words. Perception. When you live in a country where perception equals reality, reality equals perception. That is not it. That is not it. Perception will continue to be perception. Reality will continue to be reality. So the party is not really bothered by this? You don't care about it? Oh, it's a human institution. How can we say that you are not bothered? But it is a perception. So you are bothered about a perception which to you is not really a big deal? Oh, but see, understand. people are trying to make um, capital 
out of that perception. They shouldn't. I'm saying that people are making cap people are making pers part capital out of if that. If the person. view outside is that corruption is rife in your country, you don't think investors will look at that, engage with Every, to everywhere invest in, country? in the world. Yes. But that is a perception. But what is the reality? The reality is the opposite. If elections were held today, do you think the NPP would still win? And by which margin? Oh, definitely, yes. By which margin? By a very wide margin. So that, 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 that suggests that you're very confident in what it is that It is not a matter of done. being confident. It's a matter of you are monitoring the grounds. You are monitoring the events. It doesn't mean that the opposition also is not working. So the NDC is working? Yeah, yeah they're also working. I read in one of the papers, I think yesterday or today, some of the NDC members in a certain constituency were complaining that with the registration they have been marginalized. I think today or yesterday. It means the NDC is very work is working seriously. Do you think if you we don't we don't have to underrate them at all? Do you think your people, some key figures in your party are beginning to underrate the NDC? No, I'm just saying this is an advice I'm giving. Do you think that's happening? No, I'm saying that is an advice. Because if you read the papers, you really is that. You realize that they are up and doing. And then look, this is the NDC with the introduction of biometric. I, I, I've been saying that one of the positive legacies NDC has ever has introduced into Africa, African politics. I always doff my heart to them. And I'll continue to doff my heart. I said that I I used to say that, look, they implemented it and the timing was not proper. You know, the material time they implemented it, they were going in for the constituency primaries. So I got saddened when I learned that they said they are no longer going to. It's a very, very effective. All political parties in Africa must learn from what the NDC did. You seem to have a lot of friends in, in the NDC and all the other parties, and you are quite close to them. How, how then does it become a problem when somebody else has friends in such parties and then he's described as a mole and in some way, somehow, well, I don't know. he's uh, ousted I, from the party? Well, I don't know. Well, it depends on... No, don't bring... No, in this reference... Don't, don't put me of. into <laughs> any, any corner, <laughs> my brother. <laughs> Spare me. I am just talking about myself. I was talking about myself. I see a colleague that would have very good friend, relationship perfect. Oh, and these have a lot of good number of them. W will it be fair for anyone to describe you as a mole? <laughs> I'm not a mole. I am a character who can always be accommodated by politicians in this country. I, I read a funny comment on, on Facebook a, a few, I think, a, a day or so ago. And uh, a comment someone had put up was that, well, you are working on your punditry skills. That's how come you're talking so much about Barcelona and Arsenal. No, 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 no. Uh, look. Uh, hoping that should the party suspend you, you have some more time <laughs> to, you know, look, focus on Look, that on person, that. you know, I've been the CEO of Tanobo Fakwa before. Oh, really? Yeah, 2000. Oh. And 2001, CEO of Tanobo Fakwa. You have love for sports. Extremely. How come they didn't push you somewhere to maybe the sports ministry? Oh, let's not talk about that. Look, but but wait, but look, you you are you are someone who loves sports, who has experience in sports. More you than more, for about more, more, years. I think more than politics. Clearly, you are a very experienced hand. How come you are not in government? Oh, let's not. I'm I'm the deputy general secretary. It's good. How come you are not in government? Look, I'm saying that if you are the deputy general secretary of a ruling political party like the MPP. It's a very enviable position. I know, big boy. Why are you not in government? There are other people who are holding <laughs> other offices, and yes, still are in government. I, I, I don't. Government? I, I mean, I'm also playing a very vital role for my party. Are you but you board? have abandoned the discussion you, in sports. You, you, you serve. You serve on any board. Oh, why are you so keen about some of these things? Have you Today, been abandoned by your party? No, no, not at all. Today I went to court. Fifth, fifth, fifth March. I'll go to court. I think it's okay. There are other, there are other, other members of your party who have an equally busy schedule, yet still have been given additional responsibility as ministers, deputy ministers, as people who serve on never mind. as never people who work on other things. Never so why are you not in never, those Never mind. I mean, don't think, I don't think it's necessary at all as far as I'm concerned. 
because with someone with such wealth of experience, one would expect I'm saying that, that so have, you, have you abandoned the discussion we, we on will sports? Come to that, of course, but it just, <laughs> just blew my mind around that very subject matter. Because <laughs> if you have so much experience and so much to offer, why are you not helping? I am, I am, maybe you are not monitoring events. I am monitoring closely. I'm sure you are just looking at it from a different angle. Which angle are you looking at it from? When you came in, you saw the number of files. Yes, I did. On my table. You know, you saw the number of files. I did. It's a major contribution for the party. So all you have to do is to sit behind your desk and attend to a lot of files people have dumped on your desk as a deputy general secretary? No, a lot of things. You know, recently I went to Shekadi. I used one day to settle three serious cases. You're a fantastic lawyer. We know that. <laughs> we need you to bring that expertise to bear. Perhaps maybe you should uh, get into the office of the special no, prosecutor no, and no, help. No, 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 no. I, I enjoy the position where I am. But there are many more people who are sad you're not in government. You know that. Oh, tell them that. I am comfortable. You're comfortable here? Yes. In the party office? Yes. Not doing much? Not being on boards? Not doing, not doing the kind of things I'm being, experience I'm uh, being gives you the leverage I'm doing fantastic works for the party. People don't know. And being not... Are you paid by the party? I get something. Where, where something here means? It means that every month I'm taken care of. So the party pays you? I'm taken care of. Where taken care of here means what? Oh, I'm giving something. Where something here means what? Reasonable. Where reasonable here means what? Oh, you want me to tell you? The key, the key question has to do with whether or not the party is paying you. I'm saying that the, is the party, party paying you. I just want, I the just want party, to the let me use this words. The party is adequately taken care of. Me. How? Or do I need to make this open disclosures? I don't need to. How is the party taking care of you? Is it that you're on a monthly salary or you're on a I'm saying the party is taking. What, what is it? The party is taking adequate care of me. Adequate. But I will not define what is meant by adequate. Mm. I won't tell you. So it's, so it's not that like you get a monthly salary every year. I am saying the party is taking adequate care of me. By renting a place for you? I will not you tell you. Allowances I will not tell you. Tell me, tell me, even, even your own father, if you send a government salary, will he tell you how much he's earning? Mm. Or your mother, or your wife, or your concubine. <laughs> well, it's been an interesting discussion. I know we point. <laughs> has been our guest today on 21 Minutes with KKB. He has been very coy about a number of issues. Uh, in fact, a key amongst them has to do with whether or not he's on salary, whether or not the party pays him uh, each and every month. Because uh, we have, well, in an audio that went viral, he said the party is not taking care of him. And uh, there have been a lot of responses back and forth on it. But I, I, I believe today he has cleared the issue on that very subject matter and a, a few more things. If you didn't know, what well, he says he's a Manchester United fan. He also has And then Barcelona. But Barcelona. These days, these days, <laughs> when you think of those days, Manchester United, Ruth Fednat. That will be how we wrap up on uh, today's edition of 21 Minutes with KKB. My name is Kobna Chen Chehene I'll see you soon, hopefully, with the guests you're expecting. <laughs>